Okay, we've come to the end of it. Um, this will be your last discussion topic, um, and it relates to Nietzsche on Twilight of the Idols. Um, and this is a different copy, but it's my copy of the portable Nietzsche is on the verge of falling apart. So I think I'm going to go easy on it and just use um, this translation, which I suppose I could have had you buy for exactly the same price, but only with one thing rather than several. Anyhow, um, so your last discussion topic asks you to engage with Nietzsche, and um, I've been kind of building all semester this sort of tension between reason and the passions. I mean, in most of the theorists that we've studied, um, all the way up to Hobbes, to some extent, reason has to step in and constrain, restrain, and, you know, control the passions. Reason should be that steely little ball, that sort of commander in your head that tells you what to want, how to want it, when to act, what to act upon, etc., etc. It was the case with Socrates, we should be persuaded by reasons. It was the case with Plato, reason the charioteer should steer the chariot, right? It was even to some extent the case with Aristotle, who invites emotion in, but um, still it's going to be prudence or practical wisdom, uh, the, the sort of an expression of the rational faculty uh, that determines exactly what your proper emotional response is. So it's going to be reason that trains your passions to express themselves. So basically your passions are like a yippy little puppy that you have to get under control and uh, teach not to urinate on the furniture. Right? Even in Hobbes, even though everything has to do with acting on desire, right? our desire for power after power that ceases only in death, page 161, um, it, Leviathan. I, I mean, the funny thing about Hobbes is that it has us make sort of a rational calculation about what our best interests are. And interestingly, it's the structure of reason itself that shows us that everybody seeking their own ends winds up in a situation where none of our desires are satisfied. So really what we have to do is make this long-term rational calculation, even though reason is a tool of our desires, right, about what is really in our best interest. And reason shows us that, you know, alienating our will you know, tamping down our desires and existing within a commonwealth is in our best interest. Reason, 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 reason. To some extent, what we saw in Kierkegaard was a response to this. It's not reason, but really, it's going to be spirit that needs addressing. It's going to be our disposition to the situation that needs to be adjusted if we're going to meet the existential problem. Right? So Kierkegaard turns to faith rather than reason in order to give our lives meaning, validity, significance. Right? Now, when we turn to Nietzsche, what we find in Nietzsche's Twilight of the Idols, at least the section that I gave you to read here, but trust me, it continues, is a sustained critique of the philosopher's conception of reason as a commander. According to Nietzsche, I mean, we saw this in the problem of Socrates, Socrates, you know, pitting reason against the passions is a fundamental bait and switch because reason is simply one of the drives, it's one of the passions. So effectively what you're doing is you're pitting some of the passions against the others, right? So basically what Socrates, according to Nietzsche, set up is an internal self-contradiction, a tension that in fact winds up turning you against yourself. Right? So rather than using reason to control the passions, which Nietzsche considers to be a bait and switch, in the section Mor Morality is Anti-Nature, what Nietzsche winds up doing is arguing that, um, in fact, it, it's, it's not reason opposing the passions, but rather 
what he calls the spiritualization of the patterns, uh, patterns, passions. So morality is anti-nature, right? Um, in section three of morality is anti-nature, and the translation I'm working for, from is, is slightly different than yours, but nonetheless, the spiritualization uh, of sensuality called love, it is a great triumph over Christianity. Further, a further triumph is our sp spiritualization of enmity that consists in our profound understanding of the value of having enemies. In short, in doing and deciding the converse of what people previously thought and decided. Throughout the ages, the church has wanted to, to destroy its enemies. We, we immoralists and anti-Christians, uh, see it as our or to our advantage that the church exists right so largely what Nietzsche wants us to do is rather than opposing our passions to in a sense think them through hone them refine them right he tells us this um, right at the uh, the beginning in section one is of morality is anti-nature all passions have a period in which they're merely fateful in which they draw their victims down by weight of stupidity and later much uh, and a later much later one in which they married the spirit spiritualized themselves in former times because of the stupidity of a passion we wage war on passion itself they plotted to destroy it all the old moral monsters are in complete agreement that one must kill the passions right? and we saw a good hunk of this all right, so basically what I want you to do, and this is how your discussion forum reads, Nietzsche in his Twilight of the Idols rejects the general philosophical position that reason must control the passions in favor of what he calls spiritualization of the passions. Why would Nietzsche reject reason as a faculty to control the passions? So this engages with the bait and switch that, that, that in the problem of Socrates. And then finally, what could he mean by spiritualization of the passions? And I believe in the video I gave you, um, I, I gave you the example of um, you know, you know, what a, a, a chess player, um, a video game that's not um, a challenge anymore. Um, I might have even talked to you about golfing and playing down to your opponent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are all fundamental problems for Nietzsche, right? You know, really what you want is to maintain that productive conflict. So you take a passion, you think it through, you hone it, you harness it and direct it towards productive ends rather than just bluntly and stupid oppose, uh, stupidly opposing them, right? One must kill the, the passions, right? Uh, Nietzsche uses the, the example of a dentist pulling out teeth simply because they hurt, rather than addressing what we might consider to be the root of the problem. The pun is intended there. So, um, anyhow, that will be your final discussion topic. I look forward to reading it. And... Um, Thanks. Have a good day.